Imagine it's the year 2000 and you just downloaded a couple of MP3 files from Napster. Now you want to listen to them. How could you do that? Well, you could, for example, uh, simply burn them onto Audio CD, but this is stupid. You will only get 10 songs per disc uh, in that case. You could also use your PC to listen to them, but that again is stupid because it's a huge bulky machine, makes a lot of noises and uh, takes forever to boot, draws a lot of power, so it's not ideal. So that leaves you option three, which is uh, this one, an MP3 player that uses embedded technology and uh, can play your uh, MP3 files out of uh, regular DVDs. So you can open that drive up, put a DVD in here, and then play it, which is pretty nice. And so this project here has its 20 year anniversary. So I built this around uh, or finished it around 2001. And I thought this is a nice occasion to uh, present this to you because, uh, well, it's quite interesting uh, to see and it's also <laughs> kind of a relic these days, but uh, still um, quite a nice unit to look at. This is the main menu and uh, this unit has a couple of control buttons like here power button, uh, four function keys, uh, rotary encoder, uh, select button, delete button and uh, of course also a remote control. And here is of course open close. Uh, then there is the disk mode to play mp3s. Uh, we will get into that in a minute. Um, but then there are also two uh, menus like net and radio and uh, these are using the uh, internet connection of this device. Uh, I will get in, uh, to that later. But first uh, let's start with the disk menu. So this uh, now read uh, the contents of the disks and as you can see I can use the rotary encoder to simply scroll through that and uh, now I can go into that folder and I have here all the albums and uh, now let's say I want to add the uh, first album here to the playlist. I press this button and then it gets added here to the playlist and I can scroll through that. Um, that even uh, works. I can move up one directory by pressing this button. and. Um, this also works recursively, so say I want to add all of Muse, I can simply press add here and it will add all the albums here quite a bit. And yeah, that is quite nice. Um, of course, uh, you also have some uh, info, so I can uh, see here the interpreter, the uh, album, uh, the year, and yeah, this all works pretty nicely. And uh, if I want to play the, the music, I can then simply go to the play mode and play it uh, here. It's a little progress bar here. And that's working really nicely. The device can, of course, also play a regular audio CDs. So let's try putting one of these in here. asks me to enter a CD. Well, there it is. And now it's playing this uh, audio CD. And there's of course no info uh, except for the title and time. But yeah, same thing. Can select a different title and then listen through the CD. Also quite easy and quite nice to use. What about the net and radio functionalities? Unfortunately, I cannot show these uh, any more to you because uh, this doesn't have any uh, network connection anymore. But uh, yeah, radio was simply, uh, maybe that works still. Yeah, uh, uh, radio, like web radio, could uh, select your stations here. And uh, net was uh, using uh, shares, network shares, uh, mostly FTP shares. So I could play uh, MP3 over uh, shares, which, which was quite nice. So I had, for example, an uh, uh, enclosure, hard disk enclosure that could uh, serve uh, files via FTP. 
and uh, I could connect uh, to that uh, hard drive uh, via network, which was nice because, you know, back then, uh, 20 years ago, I uh, can't connect, of course, 20 years ago, uh, hard drives were still pretty noisy, like uh, spinning the thing and rattling the heads over the platters was noisy. And so I could move uh, the hard drive out of my uh, room and uh, enjoy absolute uh, silent music playback, except for the music, of course. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, th this was kind of an afterthought. So the project started as a um, simple disc player. And, but uh, these were limited to eight gigabytes per disk, which was getting a bit uh, tough. And then I added a network functionality as an uh, afterthought. Um, but you will see more of that once we open this thing up and see what makes it tick. This is the inside of uh, this player. And uh, well, there are not that many components. So we have DVD drive here. We have a PC power supply. Uh, this is the main board containing processor and uh, MP3 decoder. This is custom board. Um, this is a display and button board. Uh, the two communicate over UART. And what else do we have? Infrared receiver here. And this uh, here is a compact flash card that acts as a hard drive for non-volatile storage. And basically, this is everything. Oh, I forgot one thing. This here, this is the Ethernet card. And yeah, so uh, maybe let's zoom a bit more onto the main PCB here. So this is powered by an uh, AT Mega uh, 103, which is kind of the equivalent of an uh, AVR uh, 128, I think. And we have the uh, DAC here and the MP3 decoder here. And um, yeah, basically this uh, AVR runs the whole show. It has uh, 32 uh, kilobytes of RAM attached to it. And that was basically the initial setup. Then as an afterthought, I added the network card, which also required uh, a processor bus. And so I soldered this uh, wire onto the RAM chip on this board. And this then connects to the uh, network card up here. Um, the connection to the uh, DVD drive is standard uh, ATA slash IDE interface. And yeah, this is simply a 16-bit uh, data bus that can be a bit banked by the AVR's uh, GPIOs. Pretty simple. Um, same is of course true for the compact flash card. Actually, uh, the nice thing about compact flash cards is that uh, you can wire them uh, up to an IDE bus uh, and they will behave just like like a hard drive. And you can simply add uh, these things to uh, systems like this, which is quite nice because this is uh, silent and doesn't uh, make any noise. And I use the storage in here for, well, several purposes. So I had uh, an indexing software. So initially this was running on uh, CDRs, uh, so 600 megabytes per disk, and this wasn't enough to keep all my music. So I had an indexing software that indexed all of my 10 or something disks and uh, put uh, these in the database on here. And uh, if I wanted to know, yeah, like uh, this song, uh, on which disk is it, I could query the database and it would, would, would tell me, yeah, please, put in disk six and then uh, I could uh, listen to that song. Um, later I removed that because with the network uh, shares this wasn't necessary anymore because I ha had unlimited uh, storage then on my share. Um, so later this was used for doing uh, yeah, non-volatile storage uh, things like the radio stations for web radio, uh, the credentials for of the network share and uh, interestingly, also Java programs. So this thing actually has a Java virtual machine inside of here. And uh, I could put Java programs on here that could do, well, uh, some tasks. So most of the things here are, are written in C, but uh, I could also uh, use Java programs 
which was nice because um, yeah, for the C programs here, you have to connect a programmer to it and flash the chip. And this is quite cumbersome. And uh, the Java programs, I could simply copy onto the compact flash card and that was this, it. A uh, little side note here, the flash of the 80 megas have a, a limited lifespan. So I think in case of the 103 chips, it's, it's like thousand uh, erase cycles. And after that, they are likely uh, bad. <laughs> and actually I managed to do that. I flashed the chip so often that I destroyed the flash, which is quite uh, hilarious. But yeah, you know, I, I was, uh, I knew nothing about uh, software development and embedded development. I simply used the system to develop all the software. And of course, I uh, flashed uh, the chip uh, quite often to develop the software. Um, on here, there's another AVR chip the two communicate over UART. And the reason for that is simply because I ran out of GPIOs here. So, uh, you know, um, dealing with an uh, IDE interface with uh, the network card here, uh, the bus, and uh, all the buttons, MP3 decoder and stuff, you quickly run out of uh, the GPIOs. And so this was a nice way to extend um, a bit the GPIOs. There's also a DC to DC converter to um, generate the negative voltage that's needed for the display. Um, then there's a high voltage generator for the uh, CCFL tube that's uh, providing backlight of uh, the display. And yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Maybe one more word to uh, this cable. This is used uh, for playback of audio CDs. So if this device plays an audio CD, the uh, CD drive will actually play the audio and an analog audio signal will come out of this wire. And this then goes into the DAC, which has an analog mixer and is then mixed to uh, the output here. So um, this was quite a nice feature of the DAC. It could uh, take the internal uh, output of the DAC, mix that to um, the, the, the wires here, or it could take an external analog signal and mix it in, in as well, which was quite handy. This uh, Ethernet chip here, like I said, this was an afterthought, so it's a <laughs> kind of ugly. Um, this uses uh, one of the WizNet uh, Ethernet chips, which are quite easy to use, so they have uh, Ethernet, Mac and Fi integrated and uh, you can simply connect them to, to a processor bus and uh, do uh, UDP and TCP things, which is quite handy to have. Yeah, so this was my big project back then and actually it was really handy. So I used this thing for maybe eight years or so as my main uh, player and uh, yeah, it did a lot of things for me. It could play uh, MP3 uh, CDs, audio CDs, uh, web radio, and network shares. I even used this as a network uh, sound card. So I had a software on my PC that uh, compressed in real time the uh, sound card output of my PC to MP3, then uh, sent this over to this device. And uh, this was then playing this kind of web radio-ish thing back and uh, with rather low latency. So I actually used this to watch movies this way because the latency was low enough like in the range of 100 milliseconds or so. So that was also quite a nice extra feature of this. I guess many of, uh, especially the younger viewers of this video will ask themselves, why did I go through all the trouble and building it this way, like using a crappy old 8-bit microcontroller and uh, hand wire and bit banging everything. Uh, I even had to write all the drivers uh, for the uh, CD drive for uh, the uh, ATA interface, for the ATA PI interface the uh, ISO 9660 uh, drivers, uh, Joliet extension, Ugh, it was a nightmare and same for the network stuff. Lots and lots of software went into this and um, 
the obvious question is, why did I do this? Why didn't I take something like a Raspberry Pi or another um, embedded Linux computer? And the reason is that uh, back in the year 2000, these were not really a thing. So um, they just started to appear here and there, but uh, still uh, the, the world was still pretty much PC dominated. So you had these embedded PCs, which were also quite uh, ugly and power hungry. And you had these uh, maybe Windows CE machines, which were also terrible to use. And I'm sure there the, 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 the was def probably a simpler option to realize such a project, but uh, with major drawbacks. And um, my primary goal was uh, to have an audio player that can play mp3s, uh, lots of them, and uh, it should be absolutely whisper quiet. So I even bought, I don't know, five DVD drives uh, just to find the uh, most silent one. Uh, I used uh, three, I think, power supplies until I found one that was uh, quiet enough. And so even uh, that was an issue for me. And these embedded uh, PCs, they uh, typically still were using fans or something like that, or beefy power supplies. And so that wasn't really an option. And um, another side benefit of this was, of course, that I learned a lot. So um, I was pretty young when I did this, and I didn't know that much about uh, software development, especially not in uh, that... Uh, size uh, of, of such a big project. So I think the code here is probably somewhere between 10 and 20,000 lines of C code. So it's a lot of code. And that was quite an interesting challenge to do. And yeah, was really a fun project and also very useful uh, uh, for me. So it served, uh, served me well uh, many years. And yeah, Besides the fact that it's fun to build these things uh, for yourself, um, buying one of these wasn't really an option in the year 2000. So you had your PC, which could play MP3s back then. But uh, remember, this was just a couple of years that uh, PCs were actually powerful enough to play MP3s, like uh, end of 90s, uh, mid 90s, trying to play an MP3 on your PC well, probably your PC wasn't powerful enough to even do that. And so, yeah, but a PC, like I said, is bulky, power hungry, ugly, uh, takes a lot of time. And with these big CRT screens that were uh, warming up your room, no, not an option. Uh, there were also starting to appear the, uh, the uh, portable uh, CD players, uh, MP3 players. But uh, they supported, like, if you're lucky, 32 megs of uh, uh, MP3s. So maybe you were able to fit one album on there. But uh, yeah, this is also not an option for uh, home usage. So yeah, and the uh, CD players that could play MP3 files um, came much later. So this was mostly a thing of the mid uh, 2000s so uh, yeah basically there was wasn't really anything on the market that could do what this does so not only was it uh, fun to build uh, this and i learned a lot but it also was the only option to get one of these devices which was rather nice so yeah like i said already uh, today nobody would build a device like this. You would take a Raspberry Pi, throw in a SSD disk or whatever, and uh, you're basically done. And uh, no need to write any low-level software because everything is supported by the Linux kernel and um, only a fool would build it this way nowadays. But yeah, I, I find it quite interesting to see how much the times have changed in only 20 years <laughs> yeah, already quite some time ago that I built this. But yeah, I thought it would be interesting to 
have a look into this now already uh, retroish uh, approach to build an MP3 player. All right, then thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.